Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosalier, and I want to talk today about something related to the concept of internet failover and uh, on the TP-Link ER605. And the topic I want to cover today is uh, doing what I'm gonna call manual failover. This is kind of a dirty and um, manual method uh, for what is supposed to happen automatically. But what I wanted to really talk about was why that might be necessary. And I actually think it's a good reason um, it's still a reason why having a load balancer on your network for multiple WAN connectivity is actually a good idea because uh, you can do things like switching over networks without needing to actually pull out ethernet cables or stuff like that. That is just kind of a dumb way of doing stuff. You can do it all on the, on the computer uh, level. So um, what I covered in my last video about the TP-Link ER605 and I'm surpri relatively surprised I've seen a decent amount of uh, comments and feedback about that video there's apparently other people uh, dealing with this issue of poor internet connectivity and um, if you don't have something better in your area you are limited to kind of approaches like speedify connection bonding or um, doing what what i did in the last video which is using a load balancer and uh, doing this basically on the um, on the network level uh, connection switching so the thing is this right that works great the system does work really well if you have a situation in which let's say connection A uh, being your primary, connection B being your backup, so let's say fiber and cellular, if connection A drops and it drops for like an hour or it goes out for 30 minutes, this is a great system, right? So you have to think about the way this works. Um, TP-Link, there is a setting there uh, which I showed in my last video for failover detection and you put in a DNS server and basically it's pinging at that server, right? So if it pings at the DNS server um, through ISP1 and it doesn't get a ping back, well, it's gonna say, hey, that connection isn't viable. Let's go over to um, WAN2, connection two. Now, the problem is as follows, right? In order to return a ping, you barely need any data. So that shows that like, okay, the connection's intact, but it doesn't actually tell you much about the quality of the connection because the amount of data to return a ping is tiny the connection could be absolutely terribly slow your connection b your backup connection could be way way better but the system is not going to be able to think okay um this connection is still working but it's really really slow there's throttling there's something bad going on so we need to go over to connection b now i'm uh, this i'm talking here about the tp link er605 and i'm only talking from the best of my knowledge perhaps there is this feature um, and if you do know a better way to do this then let me know in the comments or there is a load balancer which has this feature uh, but in any event this doesn't really happen that often to me typically a connection flatlines for a while and the load balancer does the failover um, it's unlikely, it's, it's uncommon that I have a situation where a connection is viable, but it's really slow for the day, but it does happen now and again. And I'm gonna show you uh, one method of doing, of dealing with that in this video. So what I do is as follows, going into my TP-Link ER605 here, I have my WAN1, I have my WAN2, and what you can simply do, and WAN, WAN here is my primary, right? It doesn't go, it doesn't call it WAN1, WAN2, it just calls it WAN, and then WAN slash WAN, one that's the first interchangeable WAN LAN port. So what I do is I just disconnect off of um, WAN, the primary, and I go flip, go over to the uh, backup connection tab, and I go ahead and I now connect this, and now it's connecting, and um, that's pretty much it. Then what you can do is go in and verify who is my ISP. So I um, opened up this before I just did that change, and now if I refresh this page, it should give me a different ISP, I'm gonna do a refresh. And this process, as I said before, it takes a little bit of time, whether it's an automatic or manual uh, failover, it's not instantaneous because what's instantaneous on the network layer um, has to come up to the application layer like Google Chrome. So um, I'm just gonna, there we go. Okay, so it's already failed over. And now you can see the ISP is, um, is Xphone018. And then what I, what I can do, I can just go back in now remember, this is already connected. Um, so what I just need to do, if if I want to say, okay, the um, if you know your you know your ISP is repairing connectivity or something, and you know it's over at a certain time, you can go back to uh, the WAN tab, which is again our primary con connection, and hit on connect. And now I've connected back our primary WAN. 
I'm gonna jump back over to uh, who is my ISP. And again, the process is uh, if it goes well, it's gonna take probably 20 or 30 seconds. Uh, but if I do a refresh and just wait for the page to catch up, uh, I'll pause the video for a few seconds here. Uh, there we go, uh, that was actually quicker to go back and now we've gone back to partner communications. So even if you're using um, the failover as intended for automatic failover, the purpose of this video really was just to show that it's still uh, useful that you can do that automatically. Now my load balancer, the ER605, is feeding an access point, it's feeding a Wi-Fi router, it's feeding a whole cascade of infrastructure. So if I were to have to do this process manually, I'd be pulling ethernet cables and reconnecting stuff and instead I can log into the online uh, web server for the EWS and do this all uh, manually. I rarely, rarely do this, but I just wanted to show people who are using this for failover that if you do want to take manual control um, over the WAN interfaces, that's how uh, you can do it. And just also to show that it works out pretty nicely. Um, in response to a couple of questions, do I recommend this product? I find it a little bit buggy to set up personally and while it's doing the job and I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time ordering another load balancer and uh, ripping and replacing all the work I've done, probably in a couple of years I will move to gear from Ubiquity or Mick, uh, Mick Retroc, I can never remember how to pronounce it um, because uh, the support I didn't find that great from TP-Link and uh, it could be because I'm based in uh, not in the US that it's just channels or something, but yeah, I probably on my next iteration of this home networking setup will be going for something slightly different. In any event, hope this video was useful. Thank you guys for watching and feel free to leave me a comment. If you know a better way to do this, uh, please uh, feel free, drop me a comment in the comment section and uh, I'll, be, I'll be happy to benefit from that knowledge too. Thanks for watching and if you'd like to get more videos from me, feel free to hit the subscribe button.